CPAIR investigated the Nathan Hale homestead in Coventry, Connecticut on August 1, 2009 to try and capture claims of paranormal activity that was occurring within the homestead. The claims of activity included um, some apparitions as well as seeing lights from the attic, um, hearing banging sounds, um, voices being heard, as well as the rattling of chains coming from the basement. A few of Nathan Hale's family members have died on the property where the homestead is located, as well as a beloved horse of George Dudley Seymour named Bones. There's actually a monument on the property um, where Bones was buried. The night of the investigation was clear with no rain or wind. Um, the equipment used that night were digital cameras, as well as the EMF and K2 meters, um, digital voice recorders, uh, flashlights, um, handheld video recorders with night vision, and a surveillance system. When we set up for the investigation, we used eight cameras on the surveillance system, which was uh, distributed throughout the house as well as the homestead. Uh, we're here at the Nathan Hale Homestead, and we just got done setting up our video. And just to show you how we're set up, uh, camera one right here is in the first floor parlor room. Camera two is going to be the uh, second floor facing two stairs into one of the bedrooms. Camera three is going up the stairs from the first floor. You can see we got the back, the back hallway as well back here and going up the steps. Camera four is down in the basement. And camera five is actually up in the attic. Camera six is the office room, where um, camera seven is outside exterior of the building. We're hoping to capture some, some lights up in these windows when it gets a little bit darker um, or, or something along the side here. And the last camera, actually, we ran it all the way out to the barn that's outside the, uh, the uh, house itself. And um, that's going to be a good shot. That's pretty much it. The cameras are set up. We're ready to rock and roll. Our team had a few personal experiences during the investigation. One of them was when Anne Marie was out in the barn. Uh, there was a light source that was coming in from the outside and she was actually able to see a shadow um, move across the light source, completely blocking it out. Being on the bench, looking directly up into the loft where the fan is, there's a split in the boards that lets a straight line of light down. And when we first sat down, I saw something move in front of the light. And then we sat there for a while with the K2 meter and the digital recorder, and it did it again twice. It blacked it out, and I said, here, there it is again, and then it went back the other way. It was kind of weird. A second one was when Chuck was upstairs. He was, when nobody was around him, he felt his shirt being tugged. I was up in the attic, in, uh, up in the mannequin room, or whatever room you want to call that, and um, I was with Dan and Jay, and I went to turn I had my back turned facing uh, Dan and so, something tugged my shirt. I mean, it, like, like, a, like a little couple tugs. I thought it was Jay walking behind me to get, to get by me because it was real narrow up there. He was 25 feet the other way and Dan didn't see anybody behind me. Looked around with the K2 and didn't really get any hits, but it was a tug on my shirt. A third one was when Anne-Marie and I were investigating upstairs. We heard a loud banging sound. No, there's got to be someone in here. Someone that's not going to be afraid. Who's brave. Say, you know what, yeah, I am here. Um, afterwards, we went to see where the banging sound came from. Nobody else, none of the other investigators heard it, and there was nothing that was found out of place. The fourth one was in the same room where Chuck's shirt was pulled on, um, we tried the knocking game, which is where you would um, knock out a tune from um, one of the older tunes that might be known to the people back in the 17 or 1800s, and you listen to hear if they can finish the rhythm of the tune, and we did um, get a successful knocking back. Make a noise, knock, finish this. Oh my freaking god, who just did that? What? Because I knocked and it went boom, boom right I after. Did, I didn't hear that. Okay. Finish this. Oh my freaking god, who just did that? What? Our team also captured some evidence with uh, the surveillance system and the K2 meters as well as the voice recorders. 
Our first piece of evidence caught involves a K2 meter. The K2 meter is a type of EMF meter that detects excess energy that leaks out of any electrical source or appliance. It's also used to pick up spirit energy. When a spirit approaches, the light indicators will light up letting us know when a possible spirit is present. Chuck and Dan were out near the uh, monument for George Seymour's horse bones and they got some reaction with the K2 meter. Alright, so we're out here at the Nathan Hale Homestead and we were doing um, some EVP work around that tower right there that's built as a monument to uh, a horse that was buried on the property. We were taking around a K2 meter. At first I just turkle, took one around, circled the whole monument and got a K2 hit, fully pegged to the red. Dan took some grass and tell him what you did, Dan. Just tried to talk to a horse how you would. Tried to feed it grass and uh, after a couple of minutes of doing that, our K2 meter pegged. We had, we had asked it if it wanted to go for a ride and when I asked if it wanted to go for a ride, uh, it, it seemed like it just came up to where we were at and the K2 took another hit. Looks like he was standing there with his head out when I came around and just hit it. Hi right, Bones, maybe you're over here. Come here Bones. Where are you? Come here boy. Come here, boy. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa. I just got a full. Can you make those lights light up again? Are you over here? Here you go. Here you go, horsey. Let me sure it wasn't on camera. That thing went all the way to red. You want to go for a ride? You want to go for a ride? You do? You, you want to go for a ride? All right. We can go for a ride if you want. Come here. Go for. Come here. Let's go for a ride. Come on back over. Come on back over. We'll go for a ride. Hey, buddy. How you doing? How you doing, buddy? Well, that was an unexplained K2 hit by the horse's monument. Two separate hits we had. Maybe it was the horse. Wanting to go for a ride. Did a, did a sweep at the end to make sure there was nothing that could have possibly set the K2 off. Equipment. No um, underground wires. And looks it was good to me. I mean, only around the monument, and that's the only part of property where there's actually anything buried. So, it's something very interesting. Something we'll have to send another group out and look at. Our second piece of evidence caught was a strange light viewed on one of the surveillance cameras that was located outside. Um, the light actually starts from the um, when you're viewing it on the left side of the screen. Um, it goes down and then the, along the edge of the camera, and then it goes back up. Uh, we don't have an explanation for what the light source was, so we, we're not certain what it is. Our third piece of evidence caught was um, caught by both Anne Marie and myself while we were in an upstairs bedroom. It was caught with a digital voice recorder and it was an EVP. Um, also known as an electronic voice phenomena. The voice wasn't heard while we were present when we were there. It was caught by Anne Marie when she was playing back the um, digital recording. It was just the angle that I was holding with the camera. Not reflected. Really it was just the 